Hello, everyone, um, and thank you for coming to the lecture this week. Um, we are going to be going over some basic um, ideas of attachment theory, um, and hopefully this video will help um, everyone have a better understanding of attachment theory, especially if this is your first time um, really being exposed to it. Um, and then, of course, we will be looking at it from a cultural lens or perspective as well. I do have a slideshow um, to go along with today's lecture, so let me pull that up real quick. And um, so hopefully you can see that. Um, and if you haven't been on one of my lectures or Zoom meetings before, I do like to just let everyone know. I do have a cat that is in the room here with me, and he can be vocal at times. So if he does interfere, I do apologize. I will try to keep his meowing at minimum. Um, but yeah, so this week um, we are going to be talking a little bit about attachment. Um, let me just get this. A larger screen here. Okay, perfect. <clears throat> but before that, I just wanted to update everyone on a couple of things. So Anne and I are, first of all, getting back to you on your literature review topics. Um, those should be finishing up um, within today or tomorrow. You should be getting feedback for that. And if you have any questions about your feedback or would like more feedback, always feel free to email either Anne or myself. Um, we are more than happy to help you. We want to give you as much support as possible when it comes to the literature review. Um, we also are working on grading um, exam one. So congrats to everyone for making it through the first part of the course and getting through exam one. Um, we are <clears throat> working on those grades and we'll be posting them by this Friday. So everyone, well, we're grading them all right now, but um, we made it so everyone will receive their exam scores at the same time. So those will be released on Friday. Um, and then also, I didn't put it on here, but please, please, please make sure you are signing up for the Zoom lecture for next week. Um, and you, depending on if you are in my group or Anne's group, you can sign up for any time that fits best for you. Um, we will be covering the same material. So just sign up for one spot and um, we, we really are looking forward to that lecture. Um, and it's a five points of your grade, which is actually a big chunk. So please, please, please come and sign up ahead of time to make sure you are getting the spot that um, fits your schedule the best. And then finally, just updating the syllabus a little bit. We are moving things around a tiny bit. Um, this week we're talking about chapter seven in, um, in the Gardner book and then in the Rogoff book we are talking about chapter eight and we're gonna kind of be going back and forth between these topics in the next coming weeks. So um, just stay on top of your readings, but hopefully all of our supplemental material and Zoom lectures will help everyone understand the content more. <clears throat> so getting started, um, attachment theory. So attachment theory um, is a, a really popular theory and a really important theory, and it really sets the framework um, for development and relationships later on in life. Um, and so when we look at attachment, what we're really looking at is the bond between the child and the caretaker. And that is very important because this is the first relationship, the first bond that um, a child or an individual usually experiences. And so it kind of, how we see it is it sets the foundation for um, later relationships, friendships, um, security even later on in life. So it, it's, very, um, it's very important. And it's also something that is formed very early on. And we're talking, you know, within the first few years of life, your attachment style can become pretty um, set. So whenever we talk about attachment, um, we usually look at Ainsworth's study, which concerns the strange situation or the stranger situation. Um, <clears throat> and this usually this observation takes place 
between the child and the mother. They can take place um, between the child and whoever the primary caregiver is. Um, and there's been lots of different ways the study has been looked at, obviously, since 1969 when it was originally published and looked at. Um, but, and I wanted to show you all, I'm gonna stop sharing my screen for a second and share. Let's see. Let's go back here. Um, so I can't pull it up right now, but if you go, and actually I'm gonna go ahead and just pull back up. Um, oh, here we go. Okay, perfect. So um, right now we're looking at this module for this week. Um, but, and I posted a bunch of supplemental videos for everyone to view here, but this first video um, really goes into the whole stranger um, experiment as a whole that Ainsworth did. And it really goes into attachment theory. And uh, please watch this video because it really breaks down um, everything that we're kind of talking about uh, <clears throat> in this week. So. It's a really good video, it's really informative, and it kind of um, definitely shows the whole experiment that we're looking at when it comes to attachment theory. So I'll go back to um, our PowerPoint. Here we go. So just to give you a little brief, um, that video will obviously, like I said, go into it more, but just to brief everyone, the strange situation takes place um, in a laboratory and basically what happens in this experiment is um, a mom and a child or caretaker and the child are invited to a room and they're asked to begin interacting with each other and playing so they're on the ground and they're playing with toys interacting as if they would in any other context um, <clears throat> while they get comfortable playing a stranger comes into the room um, and usually sits there and observes and is kind of just there in the situation with the mom and the child while they're still interacting. And then after a couple minutes pass, um, the caretaker or the mom in this example leaves the room and leaves the baby in the room with the stranger. Um, and this is where the, the experiment you start to see what kind of attachment there is between the caretaker and the child. So um, depending on the outcome here, we can see a lot of different things. So if the baby is really comfortable with the stranger, the baby feels um, less comfortable with the stranger and is visibly upset about their caretaker and mother being gone. Um, so there's different reactions that happen here. And then after a little bit, the, the mother or the caretaker comes back into the room and usually soothes or consoles the baby. Um, and then this is kind of the second stage where um, <clears throat> we look at to see the reactions and uh, assess the attachment. So it, this will make a lot more sense when we look at the various types of attachment. So when we're looking at attachment in infancy, I, I first of all just want to go over the securely attached here because this is kind of our baseline. This is what we want to see. Um, so what this means is in this experiment where I'm talking about the interaction between the caretaker and the baby, um, the baby will not be calm, will be calm and not threatened by the stranger's presence presence when the caregiver is around. So when the stranger comes into the room is just simply observing, um, <clears throat> the baby will remain calm and not feel threatened by the stranger being there. And when the caregiver leaves though the room, the baby is unlikely to be comforted by the stranger. This shows, which you might be like, well, isn't it a bad thing if the baby is visibly upset while a stranger is present? But it's actually um, a good thing because it means they have a really secure attachment to their caregiver where they are concerned if they are gone um, and leave the room and they can't just be comforted by anyone, including the stranger. But what's very important here is that when the caregiver um, returns to the room, 
that the baby is very eager to reunite with the caregiver, but also settles down quickly, meaning they, they feel a sense of calm when the caregiver is there and they feel comfortable enough to know that um, they're secure and that the caregiver is probably not going to leave them again. So this is securely attached, and this is um, really what we, we want to see. We want to see a secure relationship between the caregiver and the child. Um, and then we have two other ones that we look at that look differently, and this is what we compare to the securely attached. So the first one is the anxious avoidant, which means um, that there's not as much trust with um, the caregiver between the caregiver and the child. So we'll not pay much attention to whether the primary caregiver is absent or not. So if the, once the caregiver leaves, the baby just doesn't seem to care. Um, and when the caregiver comes back um, with the stranger in the room, it, the baby still doesn't really care. They don't seem to favor the caretaker or the stranger over one another. So we're seeing not a real secure attachment between caregiver and child here. Um, <clears throat> and also a, a sign of this is if the baby is distressed, they will turn to a stranger for comfort um, over the caregiver. Um, and this means that once again, that secure bond is not really there um, with the caregiver, between caregiver and baby. Um, so we also, if we see that, we know that there's not this secure attachment style going on. Um, there's also anxious resistance, which this is almost the um, opposite um, side of the thing, the spectrum where um, the baby is almost overly attached to the caregiver, meaning that when they leave, they become very distressed. Um, and even when the caregiver returns back to the room after they've left them for a while, it takes a really long time for the child to settle down. Um, so you can see that anxious avoidant is less, less of a bond with the caregiver, which isn't, isn't ideally what we want to see. And um, anxious resistant is too, almost too much of a bond with the caregiver, meaning like they, they are unsure, they don't, they lack trust that this caregiver is going to continue to leave them. And then a securely attached is what we want to see, you know, an adequate amount of attachment to the caregiver where they know this is their primary um, source of needs um, is in this person, but they also understand um, and feel trust with that caregiver that they're going to be there for them. Um, so, and like I said, that video will really go into more context about this in the experiment. This is a great overview. Um, we also will be talking about attachment more in our discussion, Zoom dis discussion next week. So that's kind of just a brief overview on things, and I hope that that kind of breaks things down a little bit more when it comes to the book. So getting into cultural aspects. Um, so with cross-cultural analysis, a lot of our finding is that attachment practices are very similar across cultural contexts. So we see a lot of the same secure attachment um, styles um, and various attachment styles um, across cultural context. Um, we talk a lot about the secure base, and the secure base is basically, that's, that's Leo, my cat. I apologize um, if you can hear him. But um, sorry, back to secure base. That is what we really talk about, um, having that secure baseline or that secure bound foundation with a caregiver, um, which is usually a parent, um, which is very important foundation for later on friendships relationships and feeling socially um, and emotionally stable and this follows you through um, your development so um, you can look at attachment style and if there's that secure base or that secure attachment um, and later on in life you can see um, based on who you're attracted to or the relationships you form how this is reflected in your later development. Um, so, and then with, when it comes to cultural aspects though, there we have different 
ways of uh, addressing and responding to infants. So, and so attachment can, what a secure attachment might look like in one culture could look very different in another culture. And so it, we, we look at the crying example. So in some cultures, it might be more common to respond to a baby very quickly when they start crying, where in other cultures, it might be more common to ignore the baby for a little bit longer before assessing their needs when they are crying. Um, and so, but that doesn't mean that that secure attachment doesn't, isn't there. It just looks a little bit different in cultural perspectives. So uh, there, there's a lot of really good examples of this in your book. Um, and I just kind of summarized a few of them, but caregivers and other cultures kind of co cohabitate, I guess you could say, their um, caretaking styles. So in certain um, tribes or communities, there's even things such as like multi-mothering, where mothers all are kind of together with their babies and they all kind of share the duties of being a mom. So think about how attachment by, might play into this and does this mean there's an attachment that is formed closer with the mom or is there an equal attachment formed with the bond or the community of moms? Um, and would this lead to insecure attachment patterns? Um, it's a really interesting thing to think about. And I also want to let you guys know right now that attachment is a really interesting um, area to look at cross-culturally and could be a great idea for a literature review topic. So if this is of interest to you, um, definitely you could think about doing it, a literature review on this topic. There is a lot of resources out there. Um, and there's also, I say page 82 down here, but my book might be a little bit more outdated than the ones you have, but there's a, a picture of, of using the pouch to carry the babies, and that is also very traditional in some cultures to keep the babies with them all day long. So obviously that's going to form a very secure attachment, maybe even too secure where it becomes that um, anxious um, avoidant attachment style and because they're held really close to them. But we, we also have uh, adapted this in American culture. You can see it too. If you guys have seen before the baby Bjorns where they strap the babies to their chest um, and a lot of, or there's like other backpacks and stuff that um, American culture has become, it's become, I guess, because they trendy to keep your baby like right next to you really close. And so think about how that might impact attachment style. So attachment style is a very, very interesting um, theory. It's one of my favorite theories to look at. Uh, and it's really one that we, it's very important as developmentalists and psychologists to assess. Um, and I, let's hear, let's stop sharing this. And I hope that this week's um, content has been interesting to you and if you already do a little bit about attachment theory hopefully looking at it from a cross-cultural stand um, could help you really elaborate on your ideas and perspectives on everything like I said we will be getting more into attachment next week with our zoom lectures so I also want you to kind of think about um, your own personal attachment styles and how attachment might look in other cultures and how that might differ because um, I hopefully we can have a nice rich discussion about that next week so thank you so much for tuning in um, and yeah, we will see you next week. Don't forget to sign up for your Zoom lectures. Have a good one.